The following program is paid for and presented by John DeMassey. The opinions expressed are not those of Town Square Media or station advertisers. WPG Talk Radio 95.5 presents Talk with a Purpose. Join the conversation by calling 609 407 1450. Now, the host of Talk with a Purpose, John DeMassey. Hour number three, Talk with a Purpose, Saturdays 9 till noon, WPG Talk Radio 95.5. I'm John DeMassey. Good to have you with us, and uh, again, if you're shopping, shop Small Business Saturday, although Joe Yakovich didn't do that. I oh, mean, yeah. Joe. I shop Small uh, Business uh, every day. Okay. But, Unless but, I'm in Manhattan, I'm afraid to go there just yet. I'll just, <laughs> I don't have my, uh, my but, but you did shop, all right? So yes, that, that yes, You, you yes. did your shopping in between Christmas shows. Christmas for my house is every day. Yeah. You know, it's always, <laughs> it's always something special, special. <clears throat> yeah. um, well, we're we're here, and Joe is going to straighten out our finances, and My it's a best. it's a it's a good time to do it right before uh, we're in the holiday spirit. Absolutely, so this you is know, a perfect time to do it. Um, yeah. You know, John, you know, being on the show and sharing this with your audience is just as exciting uh, for me than it is to do my own show, and you get so many different views on certain topics. Yeah, I mean, and and in your show. Man, you get all kind of different <laughs> yeah. views, and and that's fine. Yeah, we're I, we're lively. Yeah, yeah, and I like it. I like it. But when you take what you have done and do, and I turn it into money, it's also an interesting, yeah, you know, conversation to have. And that's what we're going to have today: a conversation. Okay, you know, uh, and and you want to talk about Susie Orman? Oh, 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 I've never figured out what she does. Right. But uh, that's another story. Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey Mm -hmm. have something in common. They confuse people with life insurance, and they hate life insurance. And why is that, you know? Well, uh, it's interesting as we start. uh, We got off of uh, with the estate planning attorney, Ron Cappuccio, that talked about how great life insurance is and how it equalizes um, estate plans in general, um, and both of them uh, completely are against permanent life insurance. And I want to share with the audience, uh, there's a lot of uh, value to understand how insurance works and why uh, people should purchase it, obviously at, a, at the youngest age possible, um, for many reasons, but I'm going to give you a list of them. But let me get back with the Orman and um, Dave Ramsey. You know, those those two are great at what they do. I'm not going to tell you. They they are great. I'm happy they're, they do what they do. But remember who their market place is. The market is probably someone making under 35000 a year. You know, they're big debt consolidators, which, again, I, there's some good and bad to debt. I mean, how do you rich, live on thirty five? I, I, I'm still trying to find out how to do that. How, how, how do you do that? Rich dad, poor dad. <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki mm-hmm. claims, and this was just I listened to him the other day. Um, that is a good thing if you use it correctly. So you just can't say that is bad. You got to say that is good in some ways. You can't do too much debt that you can't handle the debt, but some of the tax deductions, some of the leveraging materials. But let's get back with the reasons I believe that you need to have a you know two-way street. You just can't listen to folks, I don't care who you are, that only believe in one thing. That's not fair. And we have that in the political world. I'm only going to listen to this, this, and only this and that. I, I don't have any openness when it comes to understanding, learning how insurance works in the everyday world, especially where you're young. If you have a family, insurance plays an important role to protect that person. God forbid, and Ron mentioned it, if you got in a car accident, what happens? What happens to the rest and remaining years for the people that you leave behind? I'm just wondering why would they, you know, why would they not believe in that? Number two. The type of insurance. Now, some people say term insurance is the way to go. Some people say permanent insurance is the way to go. Um, Some people say IULs are the way to go. Each one does something 
a little different. Each one does and uniquely performed or performs in a way for depends, again, the most important thing is how much you want to put away for this type of vehicle. The the other flip side of this whole thing is it's long-term. It's not short-term. Yeah. You're not buying it for five years or 10 years. No different than when you buy a 401k or a 403b. You're buying it for the longevity of the person that puts the money away. So if you believe that, and I truly believe that people do some of these things for the purpose of long-term, well, that should be one of their long-term um, criteria is to protect the money in this case. And remember, when you need the money at an emergency, you can get the money from those type of policies. You wouldn't have to worry about uh, the market. You wouldn't worry about interest rates. You wouldn't worry about anything other than the fact that how much is available. And some of the well-known people that have used this, you know, Ray Kroc from uh, and which we all know from McDonald's and uh, Walt Disney used it to also funnel some of his money at the time needed the money to use his life insurance. So J.C. Penney was another person that used the cash value life insurance to use it as he needed it. So if these folks are using it, why don't you? So getting back, why they don't believe in it because they're all one dimensional. They have to get the flip side of this story. Insurance plays a major role. And remember something else, John, um, about having life insurance for the, our audience today. Um, the number one and number two reasons to me is a lot of people compare it with the stock market, and that's not the play. You know, they compare life insurance with the stock market. And I, I still how, try. How would they do how? Well, they say if the if the market does you know eight percent, you should do eight percent in in your insurance policy. It doesn't work that way. It's it's not structured, and you'll see in a couple seconds. And also, they claim the the costs are too high. But again, as I said before, it's a long term strategy. Actually, the cost goes down as the years you put the dollar away into it. So again, it's it's a conversation you need to have with advisor, not the do it yourselfers out there, and have somebody that's versed. And understanding insurance. Yeah. And to me, it's a really key component when you're dealing with, and you heard Ron talk about, estate planning. Even when you fundamentally start out in life, part of your fundamentals should be a foundation of how you start to build on. And insurance is one of those criteria. All right. Talk with the purposes of the show, Saturdays, 9 till noon, WPG Talk Radio 95.5. I'm John DeMassey. Joe Yakovich is our guest. Joe is JML Financial. His website is jmlfinancial.com. And we are talking about life insurance and Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey and and, and so on and so on. Now, I got to tell you a story. Sure. Why you should have life insurance. Go ahead. A friend of mine. Now, this is 30 years ago. Okay. Five children. Five children. No insurance. Oh. Because hmm. he let the policy lapse because he was having financial problems. Oh. Not good. Died. Died. No insurance. What do you think that family looks like now? Oh, they're, they're doing pretty well. They're doing pretty well. But it was rough. I want to say. It much, was rough. Major rough. rough. If you rough. don't have family members the, that come in and the help The mother, mother had to sell her house. Correct. That's my point, though. That's yeah. a, there's, there, there, there's a perfect example of why life insurance, and if she would have had life insurance, she would have had enough to pay off the house. And have some left over. Right. And they would have been able to stay in the house. And I believe that's the truth, John. But today, life insurance, believe it or not, I use it, and what you're going to share with you, I use it for the long-term care now it has built into it. Chronic care. It's not just the death benefit, but people think that's the only thing it, it's utilized for. And it's also, people need to be aware of this, is that the life insurance today is completely different than your dad or your mom ha- owned it. The game has changed dramatically. So, and people ask me, when should I get it? Well, obviously, the the earlier the better because of health wise. But there's never not a time where you should not purchase life insurance. I don't care how old you are, affordability becomes a factor, and also insurability becomes also another factor. Yeah, I, I will say you got me life insurance, which correct, was a, which was a miracle. <laughs> you may you may be clients some hoops. You may yeah, be clients through some hoops. Yeah, but. So, but but you got it right. So it, it can be done. Correct. What do you mean when you talk about 
leverage of life insurance. You know what, John? This is where we came up with some years ago called the permission slip. I actually actually an article on this particular by a CPA firm talks about leveraging and calling it the permission slip. See, when you have money, if you really think about this, this is probably the most conservative thing that you'll hear me talk about with investments and planning and, and 401ks and what have you. But when you retire, whatever that day or that looks like, when you start to pull money out of your assets, you have, you're taking an asset and you're turning it into an income. That's a whole strategy in itself besides Social Security and, and pensions and so forth that you're going to get. How do you spend your money correctly? Or in my case, how do you spend your last dollar taking your last breath? And people look at me like you have and laugh and I go, well, wouldn't that be the ultimate goal in your life is be able to take the money that you've accumulated over your 20, 30, 40, 50 years and spend it in your retirement years and spend it and also give it if you're going to give it to your children or any of those situations. But whatever you leave behind via your family, a charity, your wife, your children, it wouldn't matter. What better way to leave it with guaranteed, tax-free, and when I talk about leverage, it's only pennies on a dollar that you're protecting a major amount of dollars of money that the insurance companies know that eventually death is imminent. So why would you want to hoard your money, live off the interest, preserve your capital as long as you can die, before you die, have all this money so when you die, who's going to get the money first? Well, you, you probably say to yourself, well, Joe Yakovich is going to be my kids or my people I've uh, put you know, beneficiaries to. I said, no, 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 no. That's a guy before that person called Uncle. Uncle Sam. Sam. So if you do not properly structure it in terms of what happens, here the the government could take their slice. So you want to do, and Ron talks about it prior, you know, life insurance is a great component to use to equalize estates, to leave money behind, to use it for long-term care, to use it for cash, because let's face it, John, if you're in a market like we are in now, yes. and you're seeing the market go down, what do you pull money from? You can't pull from a 401k or 403b or a stock portfolio because you're running out of money much faster. Wouldn't it be a good opportunity to take it from your life insurance and let the other investments move back up? Or if we diversified prudently, this wouldn't have a harsh effect. But if you're able to do that and that money comes out tax-free, that's the ideal situation. You can pull money out of life insurance? Yeah, you can pull. What happens is when you put money into the life insurance policy, this is the beautiful part of this, the death benefit increases. It doesn't decrease. It doesn't stay the same. So, for instance, if you put, you know, let's say $50,000 into a life insurance policy and the policy is worth 150000 in the latter years, the policy goes from 150000 of death benefit to 250000 of death benefit. Automatically. Wow. It's forced by law. Yeah. By the law, it's forced. And by the insurance carriers that you deal with. But when you pull money out, all you've done is pull money out of a future death benefit. So instead of leaving two fifty, oh. you take the money out before you die, and you're still going to leave a death benefit tax-free. But in the meantime, you're able to pull money out tax-free. Right, and it's but, not a game. Well, but where's the where's the money come from? And so inside the, the life insurance policy. If, the, if it was the death benefit is two fifty, right? And you pull out, let's say ten. Ten is the is the death benefit two forty? Correct. Okay, maybe right. not dollar for dollar, we're but, close but to. That, it. That's, but you get you say, well, Joe Yakovich, I lost. No, 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 no. You could have lost because you have a whole total of two fifty. You took out ten, which is in your pocket. Yeah. And your death benefit's two forty. What what did you lose? And yeah. by the way, everything's tax-free. Yeah. I'll give you another one, though, on top of that. It's creditor-proof in most states, which is not a bad deal. And the, oh, this is the greatest one of all. The IRS 
all those 87,000 agents, they can't come looking for me. Oh. And I'll give you another one. <laughs> That's why you don't see much talk about it. All those people in the Senate and Congress, they own that life insurance policy. Now think about what I'm saying to all of you. If the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts own it and the legislators own it, don't you believe that we should own it? Yes. An everyday person? Yes. And it doesn't matter how much, John. It's really irrelevant, but it's the safe money strategy. There's no volatility to it, John. There's no market risk to it. Market goes up or down. It doesn't affect the inside buildup the cash value. And so, I explain to people that all the time. So that two fifty, if you didn't touch it. You didn't touch it. It's two fifty. Two fifty is still going to grow. So it could be more than two fifty. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. You like that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do like that. And the biggest real curl about this is that insurability. But when I'm speaking with a client, John, you remember I'm looking at the the big picture, I'm saying you put a little bit of here, you put a little bit of there, you put a little bit over there. And the reason I do the three bucket strategies, and I say the last bucket is tax free because of the life insurance, no different than a muni bond, no different than a Roth IRA, no different than a conversion of a Roth IRA, but everything else is taxable. And we, if we believe, and I truly believe that most people I talk to, one of the first questions, do you believe? The taxes will be higher or lower in the future. I have not met anyone of me asking that question and say they're going to be lower. Yeah. Considering now more than ever because of the printing, you follow me? Yeah. And on all the things that are taking place. And, John, we're still going to have a problem here. You People don't really get this. In the next 10 years, we're still short defense-wise. We're not putting enough money to protect our country, and we're not fighting the the wars of, you think, well, Joe Yakovich, what are we talking about? Well, I'm not going to China to fight. We're fighting at sea. We're going to be fighting at sea. Now, if we fight at sea, there's only one problem. Chinese has an up on us because they have all these ships that we do not and have not made yet. So you understand, when I'm looking at the big picture, I'm thinking life insurance becomes an important component that allows me, my clients, to be able to leverage other assets, have a guaranteed tax-free anytime I want, spend your wealth freely without looking over your shoulder. Will they change the rules, John? That's my biggest question. Will they change the rules? And my, my biggest concern is if you and I both know what I'm saying today, is a fact, and it is a fact. You can look it up. I'll give you all the, the codes, 101A. I'll give you you know 168. I'll give you all the tax codes you want to hear. And Ron being our estate planning attorney, yeah. don't you feel if the government knows it, they might be coming for us? Yeah. Well, if we know that and you believe that in your heart of hearts, wouldn't it be a greatest time ever? to do it now before they can go back and try to go after us. Yes. So I always get people to understand that conversation when it comes to the type of insurance you should be purchasing, not just investment, not just real estate, not, no, 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 no. I mean, I talked to a guy the other day and he wasn't proud, but I guess he was somewhat proud. He goes, yeah, I, I lost a million dollars in the market. I went, nice. Oh, man. I went, nice. How's that make you feel? I, I, I would be sick. I was sick just listening to him. Jeez. But, again, if he had money or a proportion of that money into an insurance policy, he would have never lost a dime. No, no, he wouldn't have. Make sense? We're we're coming up on a break, and i got to ask you more questions about this. I will. You do. Because I'm fascinated by this discussion. It's a fascinating subject. Talk with the Purpose is the show, Saturdays 9 till noon, WPG, Talk Radio 95.5. Joe Yakovich is our guest. Joe is JML Financial. His website, jmlfinancialgroup.com. We'll give out his number after the break, 609-407-1450. If you have a question for Joe right now, 609-407-1450. We both return after these words. And speaking of Joe Yakovich, if you would like to reach him during the week, 856-751-1771, 856-751-1771. And his website, jmlfinancialgroup.com. jmlfinancialgroup.com is the website. 
And remember, Joe, no no obligation for a meeting with Joe. Nope. He can do it any way you like, whether it's via Zoom, uh, over the phone, or in person. And no obligation, no cost. Just feel free to contact him, and, and he'll try to help you out as far as your financial house is concerned. 609-407-1450 is the number here in the studio, 609-407-1450. So back to my original question. Why does Susie Orman, you just explained life insurance in a way that makes a lot of sense, but why does Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey hate life insurance? They're, they're one arm paper hangers and all they're doing is talking to a small amount of people making that type of income. When you have somebody making 100 plus, you're looking at three things, John. You're looking to protect yourself, God forbid, save money, and spend differently. Now, when I talk about the protection, John, I need to understand something else. If you became disabled, now think about what I'm saying to you. If you became disabled for any reason whatsoever, any reason, you realize your bills would still have to get paid. You know that. Yes. There's not, yes. unless you have some, somebody going to come in, <laughs> No. you know, a nightingale <laughs> and take you over and say, I'll take care of your bills. And that's not going to happen. No. Unless you have a personal disability insurance. But with life insurance, remember something. When you have life insurance, you have what they call a disability waiver of premium. So in the event if you became disabled, guess what else happened? They pay it for you? They pay it for you, John. They don't do it with the 401k, 403b, SEP plan, IRA, but they will do it with life insurance. Wow. So again, it's a self-completion strategy. If you add up all the benefits, John, if somebody actually would sit down with that individual that's knowledgeable in the insurance room, world and not just an asset collector i'm talking about insurance guy that understands insurance and understands how assets work together which is some of the things that i do quite a bit of it's a great opportunity it's like john it's like you saying to me we're going to come over your house we're going to have turkey but you neglected to tell me you're not bringing mashed potatoes you're not bringing stuffing you're not bringing no vegetables. You're just throwing a ter- turkey dry to the bone, and that's what you're going to feed me. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to, you know, disrespect you and say, "What the hell? What did you bring this for?" I'm going to eat it, but I and everything else inclusive make the turkey even better. Yeah. So in my world, the the life insurance makes all your other investments work at peak performance. I'll give you another example. I tell people this all the time, John. You got an eight cylinder. Now think about what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, just to, for this conversation, let's suppose one of your cylinders are not working. Now, your car's still going to work, John. Yeah. I'm not. I'm going to tell you, it, it might not be as efficient. It might be a little sluggish, but it still will work. But if you add all eight cylinders working at peak performance, everything is smoother. Gas is is you know cleaner and and obviously more efficient. You go faster. All the things that you take for granted, using life insurance makes everything else better. You don't have to worry about certain things. You have protection, God forbid, if you did, in this case, die premature. If you live a long time, you have long-term care. If you add everything up that it does, it would cost you a lot more money if you had to buy it separately. Yes. And people don't understand it because the people that they might be talking to are not versed in that area. Yeah. I just happen to, you know, been doing it for so long. Let me ask you this. Ask me. When it comes to life insurance, Mm -hmm. uh, I I think people are reluctant to talk about it. Right. Okay. And there's a couple of reasons. Number one, oh, I got it. Oh, I got to deal with this. And, you know, if I talk about life insurance, I'm going to die. (laughs) <laughs> I hear that. That's that old grease ball mentality. Yeah, that, that's you know, right. That, that's you know, right. I mean, I, that, that's that's exactly what it is. And and the other thing is, well, you know, I, 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 you know, life insurance is not sexy. It's not like the right. market. It, it goes up and it right. can make you a lot of money. Life insurance can't make you money, but that's not true with what you said. Well, if you think about it, John, I mean, this is a little detailed conversation, but if you have 
an account that's earning, for the sake of this conversation, 6%. If you just take out 6% of the account, interest only, you're going to get a flat rate of 6% from that investment. I'm not talking about, you know, inflation. I'm not talking about taxes, just a pure 6%. But if you were able to put it in structure, a plan together where instead of taking out 6%, you take out 9% and you take some of the principal out of the investment. Now think about it. I can enhance your income while you're alive, not worry about the market, do it free willingly, take out more. Think about it. Take out more, not yeah. less. Yeah. There's another mindset, you know, because we're used to living on less. I'm telling people, no, 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 we're going to live on more. That, that whole mindset needs to be overwhelmed in information so you get what I'm saying to you. But I take my time. But if I can give you 9 or so percent, and, and that could be in 10 percent range because I'm taking out more, that means whatever you leave your family, it's going to be tax-free life insurance and it's leverage. It's not costing you that dollar-for-dollar dollar transfer. It's, it's leverage. Because no matter what you put into that policy, if you tell me you put fifty thousand, it's worth two fifty. To me, my math tells me I let's leverage two hundred thousand. That means I'm giving you the permission slip to spend two hundred thousand dollars more than you otherwise would have never ever spent. That means you have a better life now. You know what's going to happen, John? I'll tell you what's going to happen. I tell this to people all the time. <laughs> this is so crazy. You know, if you have life insurance with your investments. I don't want you to live in misery. I don't want you to live on less because people go, well, I gotta, I, I'm afraid to do it. I'm afraid to spend it. I'm a, they're afraid. They call it the afraid to spend yes. mentality. But when you have life insurance, you won't be afraid, number one. And if I do this correctly, you will not be miserable because what will happen is if you do it like most people are doing now, they're miserable, they die, and the money that's left to their children, they party like rock stars. They're all happy. Well, I don't think that's fair. I think you should party like a rock star yeah. and enjoy your life. And whatever you leave to your family or friends or charity, no matter what it is, leave it guaranteed, tax-free, leverage, life insurance. And it's tax-free. Yeah, There's so many perks. And that's why Ron Capuccio, the attorney... That has a background in tax. That's why I worked so well with him. Now, you would think, John, why would he, a man at that knowledge factor, and been around for a long time, he's yes. a 40-year guy yeah. in the business, yeah. we talk about life insurance for his clients all the time on how it benefits them with their own income that I'm pulling out of the right way, not just holding on to their assets. But the large benefit, as I see it, is that it's tax-free. Correct. Tax-free, and nobody knows about it, John. It's not secret. It's public knowledge, but it's tax-free. So when I say that, tax-free, it's like I'm looking around going, who's listening to me? Where did I, where's that IRS agent I want to get? Yeah. You can't. It's a legality issue. So I'm using... What the, what the law allows me to, under the code, a tax code, and if you look at the GAO report, the government accounting report, it stipulates on one of the papers, and I've been through it multi-times, so what I, what I do, instead of spent a, a, sending you, I don't know, 100 pages, I send you one page of where it talks about that. All you're doing is spending your future death benefit now, tax-free. And I like tax-free. I really do. I really dig. Ta you can tell I like tax-free stuff. Because when, it, when you take money out of all the investments that we have been taught from 401k IRAs, I don't want to hurt your feelings. That was a wrong move. It was why it was wrong, even for the people that talked about it in the movie. And I'll make an offer on your show, John. We have a movie called The Baby Boomer dilemma. I'll give it to all your listeners. If they call in or more importantly, they email you and I will send them. It's an hour. You will see something that will blow you away on how and why I'm talking like this and how critically important it is for people to wake up because showtime is coming.
Yeah. I can't stop it, John. I can't yeah. stop what's going on because of the baby boomers. What's going to yeah. happen? Yeah. You know, that's why I, I talk about it with a passion because I realize now nobody, ah, no big deal. The water's nice. But this tsunami's coming. I, I don't know when it's going to happen, but you're seeing the cracks right now in the plan. You, you're 31 trillion. By the way, John, that's now. In 10 years, that's going to be close to $45 trillion. Whoa. So think about what I'm saying to you. I can't stop that nightmare that we started. Yeah. And remember, one time when Roosevelt came in, he said, and I quote, we will never pay tax on Social Security. Well, guess what happened? 1993, our President Clinton changed the rules, good or bad or ugly, and now we pay tax on Social Security. So we're paying tax on Social Security, we're paying, and it affects our Medicare, we're paying tax on everything that we have, and we're going to be paying tax more so in the future. Now, how do I stop this? What could potentially happen? I truly believe, John, the only way they're going to get around this, they're going to make a flat tax in the next 10 years. But everyone's going to be taxed. Yeah. Everyone. You know how many people don't pay tax? Not only the poor super wealth, everyone's going to have to pay their fair share. Yeah. This is one of the vehicles that I talk about all the time, the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilt have used and the Kennedys used for generational planning for their family. That's what they use. You know, Jackie Kennedy, when she passed away, yeah, uh, she was worth, and then this is a long time ago, she was worth, I think, $25 million and she paid no tax. And I guarantee you, if you look closely, John, she had a ton of life insurance yeah. on her. And yeah. no one, by the way, John, you'll love this. This is the beauty part. Nobody knows. <laughs> it's secret. By the way, it does not go through bro- probate. It's not an estate planning. Remember, it's a state plan among itself. It's contract law for the attorneys out there listening to this and the CPAs that are listening to me. Contract law. It circumvents all those other things. A 401k and IRA and all that stuff happens tax wise. No tax, legally. No tax. And with that, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Talk for the purposes of the show. Saturdays, 9 till noon, WPG Talk Radio 95.5. I'm John DeMassey. Joe Yakovich is our guest. Joe is JML Financial, and his website is jmlfinancialgroup.com. 609-407-1450. If you have a question about anything financial, Joe's here, and he's happy to help you. 609 609- 407 1450. I'm John DeMassey. We return with more with Joe Yakovich after these words. Back here on Talk with a Purpose, Joe Yakovich is available during the week. You can reach him at 856 751 1771. 856 751 1771. He will be happy to talk to you. So just give him a call and you're on your way. That's what they say. That's You're, what on they say. You're on your way. You're on your way. 609-407-1450 is the number here in the studio. Let's talk to John in Ocean City. John, you're on with Joe Yakovich. Hey, Johnny, good morning. Yes. Good morning, John. What, what's happening? Good morning, good morning. Yeah, you mentioned the big shop families. I mean, Rockefellers, they buffalo their way to the top with Standard Oil. They put other it's businesses a beautiful out of thing, it. isn't it, John? Somebody has to do it, John. <laughs> Somebody has to do that job. If it wasn't for them, John, it would be you. That's all. Okay, now, here's the thing, though. All those big shot Illuminati families you mentioned, the Vanderbilt, yep. and all, of course, the, du- the DuPont uh, chemical runoff uh, ruined large swaths of uh, pristine environment in West Virginia, but who cares about West Virginia, right? <laughs> and, of course, we have uh, the DuPont boys sitting in the White House right now. These are these are a cabal of people that are so t- tightly knit together, and they they won't let us in anyway. They're, they're the good old boys club. They'll never let us into it. How can we win against them? That's my question. Thank you. Johnny, you, that's exactly what I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you for three weeks for this question, John. Real simple, John. You do what they do. That's all. You do it on a smaller scale. I mean, if you're thinking about leaving money behind or another portion, whatever you save money, um, a great opportunity. If you think about it, John, the largest financial strongest entity on the planet at this point are insurance companies. And that's across all Barriers. And if you look close, John, really, really close, and you can look this up. If you look at the tier one investment of a bank, a major bank, and you could use TD, you could use all of them. I don't care what bank you use. And I have a list of them, about 60 of them. 
If you look at their tier one investments, John, you know what their number one investment is? Insurance. Insurance contracts. Now, where, why would you, why would they own insurance contracts? And then when I strangle or wrestle with a, uh, an individual and try to get that person, and I should have to convince them and share with them information, why are the smartest minds? I'm using banks. They do it, and why aren't you doing it? Or why would you even consider it? So that's the biggest concern of me in my profession is get people to think differently because we got so much tied up in this quote-unquote 401K dilemma, and it's going to bite us. It's a ticking time bomb because taxes must get paid. And if you don't pay it, it goes to your family. And when it goes to your family, they tax. But think about it. When it goes to your children, when they have to now take it, you just bump them up in a higher tax bracket, and they have to do it within 10 years. So they're getting your money. All right. Talk about the the safety of insurance companies. Isn't there something where they have to have in reserve? Correct. They have so have, much money. They have to have close to ninety five percent of their money in sitting. Other, so, in yes. other words, they right. have policies out. Correct. With all these people, you got it. And they have to have ninety five percent of reserve. that money in reserve. in reserve. Right. So you're talking about the strongest entities. In, in existence when it comes to life insurance. See, the reason why life insurance companies make so much money, people go, how do they do that? Very simple. You know how they make their money, John? You'll love this. You ready? Yeah. Term insurance. You go, how can that possibly be? Because think about it. People buy term insurance and what usually happens? It runs out, right? Yeah. Or they, they get rid of it within a very short period of time. Yeah. Well, look what happened to the insurance company. They took that money and they invested it. Yeah. And they're not have to pay out a claim. No. They took all that money over years and years and years. And so the Ormonds of the world, or the Ramsey of the world, said, no, no, they made all this money, and they didn't have to pay out any death benefit because it ran out. And now you have all this money, and what do you, how do you spend it to zero? And realizing taxes are going to be an issue. So what do you do? And you have volatility. What happens? You have inflation. What happens? I even say to this, and you, we've talked about this, what, last week? Reverse mortgage. Take all your money out of your real estate. Guess what happens? You die, and guess who? Guess what happens? The death benefit fills the bucket back up in your real estate holding. Hold on. Whoa. And you took the money out how, John? Tax-free. Tax-free. So you take the money out of your real estate, spend it like a drunken sailor, <laughs> die, and people go, well, you know, my kids want the house. You really think your kids want that house? Maybe, maybe no. not. But no. let's suppose we have a life insurance policy that backs that up. Fills the bucket back up. Now they have what? A house paid off if they want. Or they can go, you know what? I really never liked that house. And it brings up bad memories. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sell the house, take the net proceeds, put it in my pocket, and the death benefit I'm going to put it in my pocket tax-free. Not a bad deal. That's a beautiful thing. I would think it would be yeah. one of the most beautiful things. So tell me, what are some of the other issues when when we are looking to purchase that we should ask someone like you? Absolutely. Some of the issues you need to understand, and this is a really, really granular question that we all should have from the people we're, we're talking to. Um, the, the couple of main issues would be you need to find, about, find out about the loan provisions in the company. You know, when you take loans out, you don't have, now this is a real tedious conversation, but you can pull money out anytime you want, and they charge you a interest on the loan, but they're also giving you an interest on the money that's not in the policy. It's called arbitrage. It's really almost next to 1%. Two, the expenses. Make sure you look at policies, contract, in depth, and make some comparison. Three, make sure you have some type of long-term care, chronic care attached to it. We'll give you a 50 or 60% return of death benefit for that purpose. Four, a disability provision. Make sure you have the disability of waiver. And also, what type of insurance? Term, whole life, IUL, or what we do, we present a lot of overfunding whole life. So I max out as much as you can put away, and I won't buy it a lot of times for the death benefit. I'm buying for the 
way to fill up as much money as possible. So it looks like, you know, I'm overfunded, but it doesn't mech it. And when I say mech, it's a modified endowment contract that will make it all taxable. So you you go up to that limit. What's uh, what's IUL, by the way? IUL is an index universal life. Okay. And the other thing is, John, you have to treat this, and I know this is a beautiful word for you, you got to treat it like a marriage. <laughs> now, good or bad or ugly, it's a long term, it's a commitment, and you got to stay the course. If you get out of it prematurely, you can have your arm chopped off. Really? Yeah. If you get out of it, get out of it uh, prematurely, you could take all the cash out and be careful of not paying tax, and that's normally not the case. But you want to keep it in force as long as possible, and also you utilize it. At for the cash, and when you utilize it for the cash, you can also utilize utilize it for the death benefit. That's a tough word with a couple of coffees of me. And you can utilize it specifically for the death benefit of using other assets. So you do have a real simplified estate plan for yourself. So you have regular money, which I say 401k, 403b, you know, SEPs, IRAs. You have other investments, might be annuities, might be real estate, might be stocks or bonds, different tax. And then you have the cash or tax-free, you have your Roth IRAs, your muni bonds, and your cash value life insurance. If you are able to control those three buckets of money at different times through the course of your life, and in re- in, in I'm talking about not only today, but in the future, you pretty much are in control of your destiny on what you want to do with your money and how you want to leave it. Did you say that you could borrow on this? Now, is yeah. that different than what you said before about I'll give you an example. money out? I'll give you an example, John. You and I have a piece of real estate. We live next door to each other. Same identical house, right? You have your house paid off, and I have an outstanding loan on mine, right? Yes. Are, would you agree both our houses are going to appreciate exactly the same? Yeah, probably. I mean, they're going to still know. If you, yeah, if you live right next to me and I live exactly the same, everything's the same, they're both going to appreciate yes. simultaneously. Yes. The only difference is you don't have a mortgage, right? I have a mortgage. But you don't know that I took a mortgage out and I have that money buying me another home. Okay. I'm, t- I'm taking okay. rental income from that other house. Yes. You don't know that, but you all you know is I live next door to you, and our homes are appreciating. Yes. Now, if we both if we both pay two fifty for each of the homes. At the end of ten years, the homes are both worth five hundred for this conversation. Okay, you're going to get five hundred, right? And I'm going to get five hundred. That's exactly what I'm going to get from the selling of the house. The only difference is you're going to have five hundred put in cash, and I'm going to have five hundred, and I got to pay off my outstanding debt. Yes, then that. Proceeds goes in my pocket, but I also know the piece of real estate with that money I borrowed. It's exactly how the insurance works. That money that we took out, we're gonna they're gonna charge us juice. The juice might be give or take three or four percent, right? Yes. So we're gonna pay the three or four percent back, but the house is also doing what we talked about, appreciating. appreciating yes. And it's appreciating just about the same amount of money we're taking out that it's earning inside. So it feels like it doesn't have any effect. Matter of fact, it's actually better because you're paying back the loan, right? And you're building it back up. But what you're doing, it, you're controlling your asset because now I have you saying, Joe Yakovich, I want to borrow money. Well, you can go to the bank, right? Yes. Try to borrow money in the bank right now and see what yeah. happens. <laughs> Forget it. Go to your life insurance policy and take the money out. Nobody's, by the way, nobody's going to say anything to you. It's in seven days, you'll have a check. Yeah. You try to get a check now from the bank, it might yeah. take you months. Yeah. If you can if get it. If at all. If at correct. All. And you don't know what the rate is. Yeah. So it, at least with the insurances that we use, you're in control as opposed to the bank being in control. So you yourself becomes your own banker. Well, that's a beautiful thing. I do it all the time. Yeah. So I do it. I use it. I pay it back. And I do it again. So- the the premise behind it is why should I give the banks the money for interest rate and all that acquisition cost? Come to me and as a matter of fact, if you need money, I'll give it to you. you go, what do you mean, Joe Yakovich? You give me collateral, 
and I'll give you a check as much as you want. Because if you don't pay, guess what I do? I keep your stuff. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And people don't understand that because when you're doing it through life insurance, it's a beautiful thing. Yes. We are coming up on our final break of the morning. 609-407-1450 is our number here. We have time for one or two more quick calls. Joe Yakovich is our guest, and we are talking finances with Joe. He is JML Financial, his website, jmlfinancialgroup.com, 609-407-1450. Final thoughts with Joe Yakovich after these words. Back here on Talk With a Purpose, Joe Yakovich, our guest. Joe can be reached during the week at area code 856-751-1771, 856-751-1771. That's his number. His website, jmlfinancialgroup.com, jmlfinancialgroup.com. Contact him if you want to talk about anything financial, whether it be life insurance or anything else pertaining to your financial your financial house. Joe is happy to talk to you at 856-751-1771. We have a couple minutes left of our hour, and it's 609-407-1450 here in the studio. Joe, how do you get people because I, I talked about difficult to have this discussion. Right. How do you get people to talk about life insurance? Well, I, I open up with a conversation is what you have right now. And and I just happened, this conversation just took place, believe it or not, a couple of, actually two weeks ago. And uh, the gentleman had uh, four children and, no, <laughs> and had no life insurance. Oh, oh. And uh I didn't like press him on it, but I thought it was important for him to understand what will happen if you, and I let him fill the blanks in. And he was, he immediately recognized that he had a, a shortfall. Yeah. You know, he was making decent money. And I said, listen, how do you cover that? And I said, well, let me give you two, two scenarios. It, it's predicated on your income. So if you got a young guy, it's in the thirties or forties. I take your income, and I times it by twenty years. We're trying to replace income in yeah. that case. But when you're in your sixties, we're not looking to replace income. We're we're looking to replace assets. So it's a net worth play. So the numbers are different. You can't get like ten million dollars on a uh, a person that only makes one hundred fifty thousand a year. The, the yeah. insurance companies won't, yeah. won't they allow won't, you to do that. They won't. Like, yeah. So you need to be a you know you have to have a conversation with somebody, and you have to be looking at pretty much the whole picture for somebody's life. And we do that all the time. That's why it's, it's encouraging me to offer that, uh, that, uh, that movie to your, to your listeners because they'll recognize that insurance plays a major role, not just life insurance, but the type of insurances that we use in terms of annuities and so forth, the guaranteed income for the rest of your life where you cannot outlive it. A lot of folks just do one thing and one thing only. And we don't believe that the way to, if you're going to sit down with somebody, a professional, you need to be looking at pretty much their whole financial life. And that, that particular issue is like building a foundation in your home. So it's important for you to at least have that conversation. And for us, because we are fiduciary, that conversation has to come up immediately because you know what? I don't want to, the client to walk away and said, oh, he never even mentioned life insurance. To us. Yeah. Now you have least reckon. I don't care what you purchased. The, the biggest thing that I want people to understand is that walking away today is that even if they get bought on life insurance and we purchase term insurance, hypothetically, just make sure you can convert it to cash value type of life insurance. Make sure that if you ever want to move that term into permanent, you would have the ability to do so if you didn't have to go back to the insurance company to reissue your insurability, because there's policies that we present to people, we get them bought on the term because maybe they don't have the money. But as their income starts to move up, we then convert from term insurance to permanent insurance. And we do that their whole life. So at the end of, by the time 20 or 30 years go by, they acquired a ton of money in their policies. And it's amazing. One of my good friends just did this and ended up buying a major liquor store, kept it for four years. And now he calls me and says, Joe, we're ready to sell a liquor store and got double. 
because of the life insurance policy that you left me. Wow. I took the cash value and I bought the the store with a bunch of rentals. And they said, I don't want it. So it's utilized a bunch of different ways, John. Well, beautiful. Isn't th- it? That that is really it's that cool. is really something. That, that that how you use the life insurance, right? And I didn't I didn't know any of this yeah. stuff. I mean, it's, a lot of people don't, John. Yeah, it's just I mean, it's 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 like that that little secret that's out there that, that nobody wants to talk. Nobody about. wants to talk about. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's really Pretty something, fun, isn't it? Well, th- thank you for coming in, Joe. Absolutely, looking forward and, to it. And uh, enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. You too. I'm John DeMassey. It's Talk with a Purpose, Saturdays 9 till noon, WPG, Talk Radio 95.5. Thanks to Chris Coleman, our program director and producer. He even cooked Thanksgiving dinner like nice I did. Job, hey, we, we have chefs here on this show. <laughs> Thanks to Joe Yakovich for coming in. For the wine, for the wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, you contributed the wine. Thank this you very much. Is, hey, look, we have it all here on this program. <laughs> all right? I'm John DeMassey. Thanks for listening. We will talk to you next Saturday, 9 till noon. Talk with a purpose. WPG. Talk Radio 95.5. You take care.